While it's tempting to think of people as good and bad, especially when we see the gross injustice of oppressions like racism in our everyday lives, one of the most radical shifts that we can make in our approach to ending racism and all other oppressions is deciding to see every human being as good. I'm Nancy Luna Jimenez, founder of the Luna Jimenez Institute for Social Transformation. What if we could decide that each human being, regardless of their actions, attitudes, and behaviors, is inherently good, and that goodness is a sacred birthright? If we could start from a place of goodness, when we are on the non-target side of oppression, and all of us are, have been, or will be, we might be less defensive when we make mistakes, or the unawareness of our patterns shows up in an oppressive way. In other words, our goodness wouldn't be on the line, and we could be encouraged to find our way back to it. One of the ways that we can hold the sacredness of all human beings is to separate our attitudes, actions, and behaviors from our inherent goodness. These attitudes and behaviors come from the ways that we have been hurt and not yet able to heal from oppression. Goodness is what we see in every young person. You can't doubt our human goodness when you hold a newborn in your arms. No baby, no young person came into the world wanting to or agreeing to oppress other human beings. Young people are systematically targeted as young people, mistreated, oppressed, and this is the oppression of adultism. They're not treated as full human beings because they might need help or are dependent on adults to be alive. They don't have all the same information as adults and therefore are viewed as inferior to adults. In our approach, in our view, young people are fully human. They come into the world as fully formed and sacred beings and have an inherent sense of what is just and fair and right on the planet. Young people have been at the vanguard of almost every global social movement throughout time. They are the least invested in the current system of exploitation and oppression and are our best leaders to end it. Adultism, it takes adultism a systematic institutionalized oppression to have any of us doubt our goodness, our power, our significance to make the world right. It's the places that we haven't yet healed from adultism that have us not being bolder in our action or more creative and flexible in our thinking. Adultism is the training ground for all other oppressions. This isn't about how good or bad, quote unquote, of parenting you got or access you had as a young person. It's embedded in every institution and codified in our laws, the ways that we interact with young people. We need a world where we can envision a childhood free from adultism. And when we can envision that, we can create a world free from oppression.